Welcome to Japio's one and only spriting tutorial! Well, not my only, but the first time I'm actually going to be covering a one I've been requested a couple of times to do, a scratching tutorial. This tutorial is basically going to teach you how to hand make your very own sprites from nothing. This video is going to be split up into multiple segments, all covering a lot of different stuff. Everything from concept and planning, basic form line art, coloring and shading, finishing touches, and even up to posting and stuff like that. So this is actually going to be pretty full with content and things like that, so be ready for a long ride. If you don't want to sit through all of this, you will be able to jump to the next video if you only need to touch up on one specific area. However, it would probably be best if you follow along with everything. I'm going to try and get every little point. Now just to start off, we're going to start with the intro here. Uh, essentially, um, let's start off with what is spriting? Uh, simply put, spriting is a specific art style that uses pixel by pixels to build up an image. Um, sprites seem to be going away from games more and more. Um, games will are obviously using polygons and models and things like that, rather than using the sprites that you saw in the NES games, Genesis games, Super Nintendo games. Every now and again you still get a couple of sprites in here and there. Um, Disgaea and Nipponichi in general are a funny company because they'll use something like the PS3 and they'll make a game with all the main models being made of sprites. Popular one, Pokemon. All the Pokemon ones on the DS so far have still been using sprites. Plenty of games still use them. However, it does, I fear, as a spriter, that they might be going away. As far as you as a spriter, what you can do with your sprites? There are ways that you can get your sprites put into games. You can make your own games with your sprites. You can do a lot of that type of stuff. Um, other things sprites are used for, um, sprites are often used for things like web comics. People like to use those in there. Um, any type of various types of animation might want to use them. Uh, there's a lot of things like that that spriting can be used for. Some people like to just sprite as an art form. I have plenty of sprites that I just make in some various style that honestly have no purpose. I mean, it's not like they're going to be in a game. I don't make multiple frames, so it's not even animated. It's really just to show off. Hey, I wanted to make this person look like this, and I did it. It's essentially like drawing. I mean, it's a little different since you're using a bunch of little pixels, and, you know, that's not as detailed, and, oh, why don't you just pick up a pen and actually draw it if you're going to do art? Well, uh, spriting's just my thing. I like it. I think it looks cool. It's fun. It's more simplistic and mathematic than a normal drawing. I curved lines, pretty lines, coloring everything done by hand, or some fancy fro program like Photoshop and things like that just are not my thing, so I go with spriting. It's what I like. It's an art choice. Um, I will also, I obviously also use spriting for actual in-game sprites and things like that. I have a lot of projects and things, you know, me and my friends want to do. We're all into video games, so of course, you know, like any other good warm-blooded nerd, we want to make our own game. So, you know, I got a friend making an RPG, I got to make the overworlds and battle sprites for that. Uh, another friend wants to make a fighting game, even though I don't think it will ever get done. There's sprites for that I can do. Um, I do a lot of splicing, things like that. Uh, Super Mario World, Pokemon World, I should say, obviously has a lot of my sprites. You know, I'm working on that. Okay, and to the next explanation. Now that you know what spriting is, um, time to explain what we're specifically going to cover. Now, there's a lot of other types of spriting. There's things like recoloring, there's splicing, there's edits, um, a lot of different things that you can do with spriting skills, but the most basic core form of spriting is what is usually referred to as scratching. Essentially, it's making something from scratch. Rather than with a recolor where you're just changing the colors, a splice or edit where you're just modifying a already made sprite, scratching is where you start off with pretty much nothing usually. Sometimes you can have a base or something to go off of. However, scratching is going to be just pure out your own creation, or at least that's what it's supposed to be. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you here today. I'm going to tell you how to start off and basically go through that. We're going to start off with this planning and making a concept for said sprite so we're ready when we're going into it. Then the next step will be basically creating um, its form and figure. Then we'll be doing stuff like adding color to it. And then finally after all that we'll get all the little, little bits and pieces of perfecting it, making sure it looks right. 
and then finally actually taking your sprite and displaying it for the world to see. Now, essentially, there's a lot of different things I could scratch. There's a lot of different styles, a lot of different things you can do. Um, in this tutorial, I am going to do what is usually coined as a fake -amon, uh, fake Pokemon. Essentially, it's going to be my own little Pokemon that I created. Um, something that you generally do... A lot of people like to make their own regions, make their own set of them. It's a very popular form of what to scratch, and a lot of people want to do that. This tutorial is going to cover that, is what I'm going to use as my example. However, I will do my best to try and explain other things. Um, scratching is very broad. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. You can go very artistic and realistic. You can go very old and try and make 8-bit sprites, or you can do generally the middle zone, which Pokemon uses and a lot of sprites uses as far as limitations go. But there's a lot and lots of different styles. I can go on and on and list a lot of different games that all look very different due to how they're sprited. I mean, Dragon Quest sprites aren't going to look anything like Pokemon sprites, which aren't going to look anything like Mario sprites. They're all done in very different ways. So it's going to be, I'm going to be doing one thing, and I'm going to mention when other things have different rules and different things like that. However, for the most part, this is going to cover the fake mom, but the skills you learn here can definitely be translated into a lot of different stuff. So without further ado, that ends the intro. You are now ready to move on to the next segment, Concept and Planning. <laughs> 